Have you ever wondered what goes down at a sawmill? How the heck do they make all of that lumber? What other products and services do they offer? And what secrets do most sawmills not share with the public? Starting with our unique, one-of-a-kind, double-cut, portable bandsaw mill, this thing is a workhorse with a Perkins four-cylinder engine. It makes your buddy's wood miser sawmill look like a Tonka truck. We use every part of the log for different products, and remember that, because it'll be important later. It also has some features on it that most sawmills do not have. But before we get into that, let's start our sawmill tour by finding out where our logs come from in the first place. We get most of our logs from local logging companies and land clearing experts that come on a weekly basis. We buy just about any common type of log in our local area. The main ones we cut for our rough sawn lumber are aspen, basswood, white pine, cottonwood, and many other species including red and white oak. And for the first product on our sawmill tour, we're cutting rough sawn lumber for trailer decking for one of our customers. This is our sawmill. It's a very middle of the road sawmill. It's not for beginners and it's not for the big operations either kind of in the middle. It boasts a naturally aspirated engine, which means it's non-turbo, or that's what Tenant tells me. Let's check out some of these cool features on this mill. The whole thing is all hydraulics. It's got a hydraulic log turner, hydraulic levers, hydraulic clamps, everything. That log turner is really great. It saves our backs. Well, it saves their backs because I don't really do much around here. <laughs> These bandsaws come from Minnesota Saw. They are your basic swedged and shaped design. It's almost like a little shovel. Grabs the wood and pulls out the fiber. These blades here, they last about two to six hours per day. That's about two blades per day. Then they get sent back to get sharpened again. The average blade will cut about 50,000 board feet over the lifetime of the blade. If everything goes well, that's if we don't hit a giant massive chunk of metal with it. We also cut a lot of rough sawn white pine like this for our customers that sometimes need a soft, lightweight wood for their project. Which brings me to the second item in our arsenal of products and services that we offer. It sometimes can be the cheapest option depending on what you're building. Some of our customers bring in their logs like this to have us saw them up. One good benefit is the customers getting exactly what they want. Very little surprises there. They provide the logs, so they have an idea of what to expect from it. Now here we got a pile of white pine slabs that we had sawn for a customer, along with this one inch stuff too. This is probably the most beautiful slabs I've ever seen. Now it's just ready for them to pick it up. But look at that, that's some beautiful stuff. Logs like this can have sentimental value. Maybe you and your family has made memories with these trees in the past. Now having your logs milled up from a sawmill can be cheaper than buying it, especially if it's an expensive species species like walnut or cherry or even that white oak over there. But when you look at it, is it really that cheap? Depending on where you get it sawn, it can be just under half the price of rough sawn lumber from a sawmill. Sometimes one third the cost. However, that's just the price before you dry it. We haven't even talked about the cost and expertise needed to cut the tree down or have the tree service do it for you. You'll need to factor in transporting the log to the mill in the first place and then getting the lumber back to your home. If you're thinking about air drying the lumber, you'll need to sticker it properly. 16 inches apart is ideal if you're a psycho about it. When it comes to air drying, your best bet is to buy a moisture meter and test it periodically. You could be looking at years before you start building it if you waited for it to air dry. And that still doesn't guarantee it won't warp and twist twist on you after you move it to a different location and start building. You're going to need a better solution. You're going to want to get it kiln dried. Depending on the project, kiln drying the lumber that you just had milled might be the best solution. But then again, you have more money leaving your wallet. You got the lumber milled cheaper, but kiln drying is going to add more to the overall cost. And then there's transportation costs and storage costs too. For the more expensive species, maybe. For the cheaper species, it may just be quicker and a little bit less expensive to go to your local lumber supplier and buy lumber that's already kiln dried. Particularly one that also has a sawmill too. <laughs> Next on the tour is our kiln dried lumber warehouse. And we're gonna give you some tips on how to save money when buying kiln dried lumber. Let's go. This is our kiln dried warehouse. It seems like we never have enough room for all of the lumber that we have. One tip I want to pass on to you guys is to never go to a big box store to buy lumber. 
They're known to have lower quality lumber because they're known for drying their lumber too fast. Lumber that's dried too fast will always cause problems later on. That's why we partner with local kiln drying experts that take the time to dry the lumber right. You can't rush the drying process when it comes to traditional kilns. Now here we got our sample board of all the lumbers that we hold in stock. Quarter sawn white and red oak, black walnut, soft maple, spalted maple, even the aspen and basswood tongue and groove. We got a bunch of tongue and groove options. And a little tip about this ash and basswood tongue and groove is that it's a really great alternative to cedar tongue and groove for saunas and such like that. Basswood's known to handle moisture very well. I'll show you something else too. Even got a little bit of hickory too. Beautiful maple and white oak slabs cherry slabs even too, even pine. Have a whole entire stack of that quarter sawn red oak that I was telling you about. A little low on the walnut. We got the black ash tongue and groove circle sawn red oak. Had that for a little while and I'm keeping that as a kind of a secret to some customers. We even have old growth red pine. An interesting story behind that is that this old growth pine was salvaged from a swamp, probably water treated for centuries. Make really cool mantle pieces or something really nice. Straight cut maple here. Here, black ash. We even cut some white pine here for the Pinterest families, as I would call them. Wife tells her husband, I want this pallet wall. And if you don't want them to tear apart pallets, you can come buy the rough sawn lumber that we had kiln dried and straight lined. We left it rough sawn so that you can get that rough sawn pallet look on any wall. Lots of cherry, bunch of pine back there, more ash tongue and groove, green ash and black ash mix. Check this bad boy out, this beautiful walnut slab. That's actually leveled flat. So it's in flat and smooth, 11 feet long. That's gonna make an awesome bar top. Most of the lumber in our warehouse is gonna be kiln dried down to finished grade specifications. That's somewhere between six to 8% moisture content. That's where having a moisture meter can really come in handy with dealing with new lumber suppliers especially when you're getting lumber from sketchy people off of Facebook Marketplace. With these pinless moisture meters, they really only measure the surface level moisture. You wanna to try to get a moisture meter that has pins that'll get a little bit further inside of the wood and give you a better reading of the moisture content within the wood. But then again, you're running into having to ask the lumber supplier permission to damage their wood to find out how much moisture is in the wood. Most of the lumber in our kiln dried warehouse here is gonna be hit or miss planed and stretched straight line so you could square it up. But some stuff like our live edge slabs, we leave that rough so that our customers can decide what to do with it. Some people like that clear, sophisticated look, and some people like that rustic look with imperfections. Let us know in the comments which style you prefer. You remember in the beginning of the video when I mentioned that we used every part of the log for different products? Well, we haven't even talked about our main product that we consider our bread and butter, along with what we do with our waste that could save you a lot of money in the future. But first, we gotta go back out to the sawmill and show you what we're most known for. Let's go. Earlier in the video, we showed the sawmill cutting pallet parts. We usually have at least one mill going at all times, continually cutting pallet parts. Some of that lumber is too good for pallets though. We usually set those off to the side to be sent to the kiln. But for the time being, we are almost always cutting lumber for pallets. We cut the runners for these pallets near a two by three inch dimension. It all depends on the customer's needs though. The same thing goes for the thickness of the faceboards that we cut. It's mostly dependent on the needs of the customer. Some pallets need to be built thicker than the pallet that you see sitting outside of your local Lowe's or Home Depot. And our pallets are way better than the ones you see sitting outside Lowe's. So we're gonna go over to the pallet warehouse and check out some of the pallets that we make for our customers. Here's the pallet warehouse where we make all of our pallets. I just wanted to give you kind of a sneak peek of the pallets that we make and the sizes that we use. These are the runners here. These are about two inch by three inch runners. These are pine face boards and looking like red oak runners here. And keep in mind, the species and the thickness and dimension of the board can vary in size. Some customers need these pallets to be thicker, stronger, and some don't need them to be so thick or strong. That way they can save money. And it also depends on the species as well. Most of the time, 
we'll have pine or some sort of soft face board. That way it's easier to get nails through. If we use white oak face boards like this, it'd be harder to get nails in, especially with oak on oak again. It's harder to get nails through these boards. And then here's some of these four by eight pallets that we've made recently. As you can see, that's about a one inch board there. That's a heavier stock. I think these are actually, back in the day, they call these skids, not pallets. They're two-way pallets. We don't have the capability to make it a four-way pallet, so at least not at this time. Here is an example of our one-inch pallet. Some customers require that there be three runners. Some only need two. You can see here we got some Aspen runners on this table about to be built. These are for a customer, probably a one-time use pallet where the customer that buys them is going to be shipping out product and never see the pallet again. But it's safe, pretty safe to say that these pallets can be used over and over and over again. We have some pallets out in the yard that we acquired that were out in front of a big box store. And I'm gonna compare our pallets with their pallets visually here right now. As you can see, our pallet is a lot beefier and well-made compared to the foreign-made pallets you see right here. Whether we're cutting roughs on lumber for trailer decking or for pallet parts, none of the log is wasted. And I bet you already knew that. It's no secret that sawmills create waste. It's what they do with that waste, which might not get talked about enough. The sawdust is piled up and sold to local farmers so they can mix it in their soil in the fall. Ah! You can imagine that the livestock farms use the sawdust for bedding for their animals, but the sawdust is too fine for most animals. That is understandable, but what do you think? Pieces that are cut off the sides of the log to square it up is called slab wood. It's sorted by softwood or hardwood and then collected in a bunk at the end of the chains. Once it's full, it's banded up and stored in the back of the property to become seasoned. Once it's well seasoned, we sell the bundles of slab wood to the public as a cheap firewood option. So if you want to learn more about our products, our sawmill, and and lumber education then hit that subscribe button and the notification bell and start watching our videos and I know you got more questions you want to answer too and I'm willing to bet that at one point in this video you thought buying slab wood and cutting them up into sizable chunks look like too much work but I promise you there's a simple hack to get these giant bundles of slab wood broken down it's a lot easier than you think. We have that and everything you need to know about slab wood in this video right here. We'll see you there, brother and sister. <laughs> kind of chilly out here. I was filling the boiler earlier and I got a little too close to the fire and I burnt my eyebrows. <laughs> All across the world. <laughs>